All right, since you guys all arrived on time on a Sunday morning, I'm already impressed. <laughs> so welcome. This is the undergraduate research um, presentation discussion. Um, good news, I don't have any slides. We're just going to talk and get your questions answered because by now you're probably bored of slides already. I know I get bored of them. Um, I have a few students who've joined us today who participated in the program already. If I miss anybody, let me know. I have Jonathan and Gianna. I said that right, 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 and Maria and Leah. So um, if it's okay, oh, and Lauren, I'm sorry, Lauren, how are you? Sorry, I missed you. Um, so what I thought I'd do first is let each of them tell you a little bit about their experience, because I think it's much better to hear from students who've been in the lab, and then we can go through and answer some of the questions. So Lauren, since I missed you, I'm going to let you go first. Tell them a little bit about what lab you were in, what you did, and um, a bunch of you asked us questions about virtual. Most of these students all did virtual all summer. So Lauren, I'll let you lead. Um, so I worked in the Kumar lab this summer, which is all about genomics. It's about different technologies and how you can do uh, evolutionary research with computers. So uh, we did, I focused on cancer metastasis this summer, where I studied how cancer will spread through the body. So we took genomic data from cancer samples and we were able to analyze them through programs that we are creating and working with. So that oh, was my main focus this summer. Now, how did you do that virtually, Lauren? Um, a lot of Zoom sessions. Okay. Uh, so we had a weekly Zoom session as a lab, and then we had individual project Zoom sessions, which helped talk about our program. But then other than that, we got assigned our work, which we did all on the computer so that Consisted of gathering data, analyzing the data, whether it was in uh, coding languages like Python and R. So we mostly did our research through there. Very cool. Now, what's your goal, Lauren? What's uh, your goal post college? I'm hoping to go to graduate school for genetics. Very cool. All right. Thanks. Jonathan, how about you? What'd you do this summer? So this summer I participated in uh, what, what we call an REU, which is a research experience for undergraduates. It's an NSF funded program. Um, interestingly enough, last summer I worked in the Kumar lab. But um, <laughs> this, this summer um, I worked uh, virtually doing a, um, a simulation project um, with the uh, Gulf of Maine Research Institute in Portland, Maine. I did it all here uh, in Philadelphia though. Um, so my project essentially revolved around um, uh, estimating how much carbon is contained within a community of fish if you fish on, in, for different sizes of fish. And so um, the, the conclusion of the, uh, of the project essentially being that um, if, you, if you fish for um, a cer certain sizes of fish, you can retain more carbon within the community and lessen greenhouse gas emissions uh, based on fishing. But REUs are very interesting because um, it's it's not just a, a, a strict um, it's not just strictly research. There's there were tons of workshops like uh, journal clubs, um, coding sessions. We had ethics workshops. Um, we had tours of local seafood businesses, and all all funded by the government. And um, and I got paid to sit in my attic and run simulations on my computer. So it was a lot of fun. Very cool. But I bet your undergraduate research experience at Temple helps you get into the REU, which are very, very, very competitive. It's hard to get into a lot of REUs. So as we go through this discussion today, one of the things I think our students would stress with you as well is to get into research early if research is your goal, because then you can build on your early research. And as Jonathan said, you can totally change directions. You don't have to stay on the same path. You don't have to study the same things. Um, genomics and fish do have a relationship. So, you know, they saw in him, I'm sure, a skill that they were really interested in moving forward with. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, Gianna, tell us a little bit about what your research was. Hi, uh, so I worked in the Moore Lab on main campus. Uh, this summer, but I worked virtually. I've been working there for the past two years since I was a freshman. I'm a junior now. And the lab's work focuses um, on neuronal plasticity. So how our 
neurons adapt and change to um, our environment as we grow. Um, my project in specific focuses on the plasticity of the axon initial segment of the neuron. And I've been working on that uh, since for the past two semesters. Um, and this summer, uh, because I was working virtually, my job kind of switched from doing the in-person experiments for my project to doing only the data processing and analysis. So I would um, have Zoom calls with our lab tech and he would complete the experiments for me um, and make sure that um, they were running the way that they should be and then send me the data and I would go from there. Um, but yeah, it was a good time this summer. Very cool. Gianna, what's your goals post uh, Temple? Um, a, go to grad school for neuroscience. Very cool. Thanks. Maria, how about you? Um, so I worked with Jocelyn Bem this summer um, studying urban ecology and like there's bias in urban ecology research. Um, so mostly that meant that I was going through and uh, filtering all the articles that we would use for our research and making sure that we were looking at articles that were only on animals, um, terrestrial in the U.S. And then we went through and looked at the maps and uh, geo-referenced them in QGIS and uh, digitized study sites. So it was a lot of like computer work, which I haven't done before. So I was a bit intimidated at first, but I ended up getting the hang of it and it was pretty fun. So yeah. Yeah. Sounds like you added some really cool skill sets though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Very cool. Leia, how about you? What'd you do this summer? Hello. So I actually worked in the Moore lab for the spring semester, but then I switched to the Thompson lab to work for over the summer. Um, and so far, and that Thompson lab's up on the health science campus, right, Leia? Right. Or actually, it's um, it's in the College of Public Health, so it'll be on. Okay. Um, so it is more of a physical therapy kinesiology lab, and we study motor units, which are all the neurons connected to a certain muscle. And basically, what we did since it was online was we studied already collected data from human volunteers, where it was just like taking EMGs and we basically like analyzed and cleaned up the data because basically like when you're having someone move a muscle there's just like a lot of like background noise with like other like neuron impulses so that's kind of what I spent doing all summer and I learned actually a lot of coding which I just feel like is a really helpful skill to have just in general for any STEM field um, because yeah we I got really familiar with the software MATLAB and I just, yeah, that was a pretty good experience. Great, great. I think that's all my experience or non-freshman students on the call. So I know for some of you, you asked questions about virtual research. So there are five really good examples of the fact that you can do virtual research. Obviously, the goal is to allow you to get into the labs as soon as we can. Um, this fall in the undergraduate research program, students are allowed back into labs as long as the labs are able to maintain the four pillars. I'm sure you've heard about for the last three days. Um, so if there's space in the lab, if there's protection in the lab, if you know there's social distancing, all that kind of stuff, then you then students will be allowed back in the labs. However, every lab also had to make sure that students could go virtual should something change within our scenario. So um, all good stuff. Um, uh, one of the other questions that uh, was asked in the chat was, can you also do research on the health science campus? The issue is the answer is yes. We have just as many labs on the health science campus as we do here on main campus. And you pick your lab. We don't put you into any lab. Um, the process is that we provide lots and lots of data about lots and lots of different labs. And you make the selection and you make the connections. You want to think about finding a lab as the same way about going out and finding a job or an internship. In fact, many students think of their research as their internship because you have to put together your portfolio, your resume, you have to you know, correspond with the faculty member, you have to meet up with them and interview, and you have to get a spot in their lab. So um, it can be competitive depending on the labs, but there's an enormous amount of opportunities in lots of different places. 
um, to get uh, uh, labs. Um, a lot of freshmen asked, can you start right away? Now, a number of these students did start like the second semester of their freshman year. Not everybody can. It really all depends on your course load. Um, research, which all these students will tell you, takes a lot of time. It's not something you do for an hour. It's not something you pop in for 20 minutes and leave. You need really big, dedicated blocks of time. So we usually tell freshmen to wait that first semester, get your feet under you in terms of how your classes are organized, how you're going to do your work, and really get a solid foundation on your academics. Because you don't want to be learning how to do all this, especially in our Zoom world today, and then trying to balance nine to 10 hours a week in research, which I bet all of you guys have done, right? It's about nine to 10 hours a week. They, 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 the faculty need you. You're part of their lab. They have stuff they want you to do. So we usually tell students to hold off on that first semester. Some students start volunteering the second semester of their freshman year, but you're all eligible as long as your grades are okay to join the undergraduate research program next summer, which I would highly recommend because again, it's like your first internships um, and it'll get you that head start in research and then you can, you know, grow from there. And there's lots of opportunities um, past that. Um, so any questions on just put them in the chat and either the students or I will be happy to answer them for you. So feel free to open up the chat. Yeah, Jonathan, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to stress that it's not necessary that you get into a lab as soon as possible. I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't um, start research until the summer before my junior year. And here I'm entering my, um, in my uh, senior year now. Um, but uh, but it, it is important if you if you have a, a goal in order to, you know, sort of build up to that goal. And so, um, so like the, 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 what I had learned last summer with, with a lot of data processing was very applicable to the, the research that I had done this summer, which is important as you move forward. So you have time. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the thing that most of the researchers, student researchers learned this summer was the importance of technology and computers, um, because that those were the students who were able to pivot. Those are the ones that were able to use their MATLAB skills, their Python skills, their R skills. So for those of you who are coming in as freshmen, just an FYI. There is a certificate in computer programming that you can take. Um, it goes on your transcript. It's just like a major or a minor, and it's only three courses. So it's a course in either C or Python. I would take Python if you're a CST student. Um, it's a course in Java, so it's a little bit different type of language. And then it's a course in data, which is critical in any kind of research research. So you can, you know, a lot of you can add that as some of your extra credits. So um, just something to kind of think about. Um, I think that would be a big help for everyone. Um, do all summer labs require you to be on campus? That depends. Um, in the past, many of them did, but not all of them. So a lot of times there's labs in math or in physics or in computer science that didn't require students to be on campus. Um, it all depends on the lab. And of course, it's all going to depend on what next summer brings. Um, a lot of faculty have learned that students are really good at this data portion. And there may be opportunities next summer that will continue to be virtual. But I think most researchers really like you in the labs. And for students who've been there, it's nice to be in the lab. <laughs> you know, it's, it's teamwork, it's collaboration, it's knowledge sharing. Um, so, you know, that's just something to consider. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, how can we apply for the data certificate? Well, yeah, it's called a certificate in computer programming. It is in the CIS department and you can just um, talk to your academic advisor, your CST academic advisor. The first course you would take is either CIS 1051 or CIS 1057. So what I always tell students is take that, take that one of those two courses, see how you like it, and then you can always add the certificate later. But taking just CIS 1051 or 1057 can't hurt, as all these guys will tell you. Anything that gives you some of that foundational thought process and thinking about programming is a great idea. So you don't have to add the certificate to take 1051 or 1057 in the CIS department. 
Okay, I'll be a freshman or a student this fall. What is the different opportunities for research on the subject? What is the role that let's say a first year student would have in a neuro lab. Well, two of you guys were in the neuro lab, so I'll let you talk about that. Um, hi, so um, there's, um, I would say probably more neuro research, um, not on main campus, um, but there are, it depends on if you're looking for more cellular and molecular neuroscience, like the Moore lab that I work in. Um, there's also the Patterson lab on main campus. That's a lab that a lot of student um, that a lot of students have worked in that they really enjoy. Um, or if you're looking for more behavioral neuroscience or uh, psychology based neuroscience. Um, and as for roles that first year students would have. Um, it depends on the lab. Everyone's uh, experience will vary, but for me, my whole first semester um, in the lab is when I was um, a second semester freshman. And for that whole semester, I didn't have a specific project. I just shadowed um, all the other workers in the lab, kind of helped them with the smaller task, learned everything that I could. And then that following um, summer was when I started to work on my own project. So it really depends on what you're looking for in terms of neuro research. Yeah, I think Gianna like covered that really well. And I worked in the Moore lab as well. So I'm gonna be a sophomore. So I started my spring semester freshman year. And just like to give you an example, like the different stuff I was doing was, um, I was doing, um, it was all neuroplasticity based. So um, I was watching like mice videos and timing like how long they spend in each chamber because um, basically they had a box and there's different chambers of different walls and rooms and we were testing bias um, so we had like just a time how much they spend in each room. I also learned um, a little bit of imaging with a confocal so I got to look at neurons. I didn't get a chance to like really learn to do it myself but I just got to what Gianna said like shadow a lot of people and it was super cool. Yeah, and as you grow in your academic career, you'll grow in your research career, right? The challenge is when you start as a freshman, you don't know very much yet. So as you learn more in the courses that you go through and the experiences you have, you'll get more and more and more responsibility. A few years back, we had a student who was up on the health science campus who started as a second semester freshman. And by the time he graduated, he was certified to do open heart surgery and feral pigs. You know, he didn't get that freshman year, <laughs> but he did get it by the time he was a senior. And it was just through a lot of time and learning and dedication um, to the process. So, you know, it, it, it's, you won't get into the lab and be given the $5 million piece of equipment to work on the first day. It takes some time. Okay. Um, okay. So talking a little bit about the URP program, the process. Um, it's first thing I've got to tell you, and hopefully these guys will agree with me, is you've got to read your emails, right? The, and and, and you, students typically are not good at reading their emails. I understand they back up, you get a lot of them, I really get it, but it, it is important. Um, the undergraduate research program opens its application process twice a year. It'll open in the middle to the end of October, and that will be for um, research that will begin in the spring. So you're always applying a semester before you're going to do research. And then in the spring, around March, it'll open again for both summer and fall. So we only do two applications a year. You do have to apply. Um, part one of the rules is you do have to have two semesters of undergrad two semesters within CST in order to be eligible for research. Again, that's because we want you to really get a solid academic footing, right? We want your GPA to be stable. We want you to know what you're doing. Take those entry level courses. Um, some students do start in labs their second semester freshman year, but a lot of times it's volunteer, right? You don't have to take a course or things like that. Um, some of these, um, the um, 
So you have to watch your emails. You apply. It's not, not hard. You don't have to get letters of recommendation or any of that. You have to maintain a GPA of 2.75 in your CST courses. Again, that's not to be punitive. It's just to make sure that you're doing okay. We don't want to get you overburdened. You know, if your, your CST GPA has taken a hit, we want to make sure you get time to build that back up because, you know, if you're going on to grad school and things like that, that GPA becomes important. So two semesters, 2.75 GPA. So, um, and then you'll go through the process and then you pick the lab. So um, at the end of the call, I'm going to show you where the website is and how you go through and pick the lab. There are hundreds of projects. Um, and the key is labs are small, right? They can't take 10 students. Probably each of you, one, two, maybe three undergraduates in a lab because there are also graduate students and PhD students in the lab. And especially right now with social distancing, it's going to be even more um, particular about how many people are in a lab. So um, that means you have to apply to lots of them. Don't apply to just one lab, right? Jonathan, that's dangerous. You know, you know, you might have your heart set on one particular lab, but probably you and 45 other students all have your heart set on that one lab. So keep an open mind. Um, so apply to, we always tell students to apply anywhere from eight to 10 labs because that way you've got a shot, right? Um, so you apply, you talk to the faculty member, uh, you have an interview, usually on the phone or in person, depending on what's going on, and then they select you for the lab. You fill out a lab research form so we know what you're doing, and away you go when the semester begins. In the summer, it's like a full-time job. It's typically about 350 to 400 hours full-time in the summer, and we do pay you um, a stipend for working in the lab over the summer in a full-time capacity. It's about $4,000 for the summer, okay? All right, uh, let's see, any other questions? Um, yes, some of these folks are in the Science Scholars Program. <laughs> So feel free to ask them any question that you want. Um, the Science Scholar Program is a program that you have to get invited to apply for. You can either be invited when you're coming in as a freshman or when you're coming, rising from freshman to sophomore. It is a very high level program. Students must maintain a 3.65 GPA um, and they're funded for three summers of research. It's really focused on those students whose goal is to get a uh, MD, PhD in a research capacity. Um, the focus is on research. Um, it is not a focus for students whose goal is to go to med school. So it's for students who really want to follow a career or explore a career in research. Um, so it's possible that if you're doing really, really well at the end of your freshman year, that you could be invited to apply um, next summer. And I'm, I'm pretty sure these students would tell you it's a pretty awesome program to get involved with. But uh, URP is just as good. Undergraduate research is just as good. It just doesn't support you for the three summers like the Science Scholars Program does. Yeah, Leia. Um, another thing that I learned that I wish I did, and I remember Rose saying this last year, is you can be involved in SSP and URP if you are an SSP. And it's so much better to do so because SSP, you um, you are guaranteed like a $4,000 stipend for the summer, which is great. But if you want to be making money like during the semesters, SSP doesn't offer any money for that, but URP like certain labs might give you more money. And I kind of wish I took that opportunity because I could have gotten a three, like a three credit course and then be getting paid like $500, but I forgot to do it, which I'll be making sure to do next year. <laughs> Good. Yes, right now, um, undergraduate research students are paid a $500 stipend, but you do have to take a research course. So you'll actually have a course on your transcript that, which is, again, another good thing, right? Because when someone's reviewing your transcript for graduate school or medical school or anything, um, that course is on your transcript. It does have to be a three or four credit research course, and you also get a grade for it. And some of these students will tell you that it's usually a good grade. <laughs> <laughs> a little easier than some of your other research uh, biology or chemistry courses are going to be. Okay. All right. Any other questions I can answer for everyone? I've got all the experts here, so. All right. I just want to take a minute to share my screen with you.
and um, show you, hopefully I will, yep, here we go. So how do you find out about it? How do you real find all of these opportunities? So if you go to the CST webpage, can everyone see my screen? Yep, okay. If you go under the research tabs, you'll find all the information about research within CST. And if you come down here to the undergraduate research program, You'll see a little video if you want to watch it, but it talks about the URP, so it tells you a little bit about the program, and then it has a tab that's called Find Your Research. So on the Find Your Research, you'll see two links, research projects in CST and research projects outside of CST. And outside of CST would be those projects that would be up on the health science campus or in bioengineering or uh, College of Public Health, um, we pretty much limit to those three colleges. Um, we don't fund research, for example, in like Fox. So within CST, if you open this, you will see I think it's 47 or 50 pages of research opportunities and they're usually sorted by faculty department. So these are all the biology projects. Go down a little further, you'll see still lots and lots of biology projects. So if you want to do lots of different things in biology, you can. Uh, let's see, let's get some chemistry here. See, these are all by, okay, there's the iGEMS, Dr. Kumar, which has, he's been discussed. He does have a very large lab and can take a fair number of students. Um, here are the uh, chemistry projects with Dr. Valentine. Um, most of the biology projects, by the way, folks, you'll also find in CST under the biology department, okay? So on and on and on. Now, we talked a little bit about projects up on the health science campus. These would be those projects. So projects in the School of Pharmacy, projects within the Lewis Katz School of Medicine. Um, they're usually listed within their department. So anatomy, biochemistry, uh, cardiovascular research, uh, metabolic research, uh, let's see, and you'll also see uh, translational medicine. Now, keep an open mind whenever you're looking at these projects. For example, um, Dr. Elrod, although he does transla translational medicine, um, he may be looking for students who also have computer science degrees. Um, Dr. Ward, She's one that a lot of neuroscience students go to work for. She is studying or focusing on the role of inflammation and also does a cannabinoid, can, I'm going to say it wrong, cannabis basically, um, uh, information or research. So lots and lots of different opportunities. Um, there's also opportunities to present your research. Um, last year we had the undergraduate research symposium, which was in the fall. This year we're going to postpone that and do it in the spring. And then there are other organizations within the university, such as the TERFs Cruise, which is in the spring, that you can also um, display your work at. And you do want to display your work. Um, that's really, really important. Um, we didn't update this this summer, but here are some other students and the kind of research they've done. Um, environmental science, biochemistry, computer and informational science. Uh, this student went to Iceland, Hana, um, which was really cool. Okay. So hopefully that gave you a taste of some of the undergraduate research opportunities. Um, I want to highly recommend that you would get engaged. By the way, if you're a pre-med student, research is for you as well. Um, lots of students, even though they're pre-med, will do one or two semesters of undergraduate research. Um, something else, just as an FYI, as you communicate with faculty members, most faculty are going to ask you to stay two semesters. And the reason being is a lot what Leah and Gianna said. The first semester, you're learning about the lab, you're learning about the equipment, you're reading research papers, you're learning about the environment. It's really that second semester when you get the real research experience. So many faculty are going to ask that you stay two semesters because they're investing in you just like yours investing in the lab. So they want to make sure that second semester um, you get more meat, which is also why a lot of faculty members like you to do summer because summer gives you dedicated time when you're not running off to classes and thinking about your midterms. Summer research is really a good idea and gives you a much better feel of what the research process is like. Okay, 
Okay, to my experienced students, any last words of wisdom? Anything I forgot to say? Nope. Thank all right. All. Oh, good, good, good. Um, read your emails. Really important. Okay, you're going to get an email called the CST Opportunities email. Comes out like once a week. At the top is a summary. It says exactly what's below. Open it up. Read the summary. If you don't care about anything, delete it. If something piques your interest, then you can go down below. So it'll take about a minute and a half, um, but it could be a very valuable minute and a half because, you know, this semester it's going to be tricky because we're not going to be putting posters up all over campus. I won't be standing at the doorway with handouts saying register for undergraduate research. So just, you know, make sure you're reading those emails because that's going to be our primary way of communicating with you. All right, I've gone over by a couple of minutes, which is very normal for Rose. <laughs> <laughs> um, if anyone has any other questions, please feel free to email me. Be happy to answer them. And um, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I hope you um, got everything you had hoped for answered. <laughs>